Hey there everyone and welcome to Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. In my most recent session of Dungeons and Dragons, the party ventured into the Underdark for the first time and came upon this massive stone door surrounded by mushrooms and fungus. And so I thought I would create that. And normally I don't create sort of one-shot pieces of terrain, but I am really proud of how this one turned out. I'm really glad I did it. This is a lot of sort of little mini crafts involved with this one. So I'm gonna walk you through how I did all those and put everything together to create the gate to the Underdark. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy. To start things off, I wanted some sort of plan. So I grabbed a piece of paper and a pencil and sketched a very rough sort of idea of what I wanted to do. I'm no artist, but I wanted to at least get some sort of baseline for wanted. Uh, big stone door, stone archway around around it. These dimensions didn't end up meaning anything, but they gave me an idea of at least how big I wanted things, roughly. I knew I wanted lots of mushrooms and fungus, and then for the door, uh, I wanted to do some sort of carving. wasn't sure exactly what, but in the end, this drawing ended up being just enough. So first thing I needed to get started on was the base structure, the, the stone work. So I cut out some rough shapes, the big archway, the door, and then a base. This is all just XPS foam, despite the color difference. And then I also grabbed some scrap. This is way more than I ended up using, but I wanted just some variety, just in case I changed my mind halfway through. So the first thing I did was I wanted to have a sort of ramp up to the door itself. So I used a Sharpie and just sketched out a rough shape of the ramp I wanted to create here, as well as where I wanted the ramp to sort of end. And I used this uh, cheap electric foam cutter with a long straight edge and just used that to cut into the foam, making sure to bevel it as deeply as I could without damaging the very edge of the foam to make sure that the it wasn't going to break or be damaged. And then got the top half here using the same method. This uh, hot wire cutter is very cheap, so it doesn't maintain its heat very nicely, and it obviously burns as well. But it does give a nice shape to the base. After that, I just hot glued on the arch on the end here. And then I grabbed some of that foam and just sort of laid out a base of kind of what I wanted to do. This is what I ended up with. Uh, hot glued all of that down to the base. I did end up having to square a bunch of these pieces off because they were not square. But after all that was dried, I grabbed a blade and, and started to put in my stone texture. I did this all over the place. Uh, this was quite messy, but it does give a great effect using the blade to sort of tear away pieces of the XBS foam. I did do the back just a tiny bit. Uh, I didn't want there just to be a flat back. Uh, the, most of the back does end up being just straight black because you won't end up seeing it, but for players sitting on the ends, I wanted there to be at least a little bit of wraparound so there was still some illusion that this is in fact a stone wall sort of thing. And this is it all done. Uh, I then used the tinfoil method to give it even more texture for the stone. Did that all over the whole piece. And then uh, I grabbed this flocking, it's just a mix sort of aggregate of sand, small pebbles and larger rocks. Poured white glue wherever I wanted that and just poured my mixture all over everything. I poured way more than I ended up needing uh, just because some of these, some of this glue is in hard to reach places so I just poured it over everything and then obviously dumped off all of the extra here. And this will give some nice texture variation to just the foam. I had these weird gaps where the XPS met so I wanted to fill those in I used this joint compound here. This is great for quick and easy stone texture and I just used that to cover up all those spaces. This side ended up being a little too thick, so I scraped a bunch of it off to try to get rid of that sort of cake frosting texture. Uh, there still ends up being a little bit in the end product, but it's on the side and it wasn't too dramatic, so I didn't mind too much. Scrape some extra off on this side as well. 
After a nice black base coat, I use this dark pewter gray to get everything a nice stone color. Did that over the entire piece. And I just use full strength paint. I don't, I water down a little bit, but I'd rather have the nice base color than have it be too thin in some spots. After that, I grabbed this Craftsmart Gray as well as a makeup brush and started a dry brush here, wiping off all the extra paint and then just gently hitting the piece with the gray here. This really brings out all the texture that we got with the blade and the XPS foam. And then after that, I used this Country Twill as another dry brush, this one more sporadic and random to add some color variation to the stone. After all of that was dry, I wanted to do the sand flocking that we added as sort of dirt, so I used this dark brown and painted all that in, uh, avoiding the larger stones, making sure that they stayed that stone color we already painted. And then I did a dry brush with that country twill again over the dirt areas. This will break up the, the stone colors nicely so it doesn't look like just one big blob of gray on the table. And once that was all dry, I moved on to a black wash. This is a homemade black wash, uh, mostly black, some brown, and then a ton of water, and then just did a little bit of dishwasher flow aid. And I did that over the entire piece, making sure to get up inside the arch, all over everything. And then once that was all dry, I used this very light gray and did one more dry brush all over everything. Uh, I tried to avoid the dirt, but I ended up hitting it a little bit, which in the long run doesn't particularly matter, but this will bring out all those highlights again, and I just add more color depth as well. And with that done, our archway is complete. Next, I worked on the door. So I just did this by hand. Uh, I'm not an artist, but I wanted to get in some practice, so I figured this would be a good opportunity. I just used this ballpoint pen to sort of carve in a design. I did this sort of outer framework, uh, and then I also made sure the gap of the two piece or two sides of the door was more uh, prevalent and then just sort of did what felt right. I split the two halves into quarters. Uh, then I grabbed this circle. This was, uh, I think it was a base that I ended up not using for another project. And used that to create a circle in the middle. Uh, and then I thought, this is the Underdark, so maybe I should theme it towards the drow. So I used this Popsicle 6 to sort of trace a rough loth deity symbol into the door. Sort of an eight-pointed star is the general shape. It's a little up to the imagination to get there, but it ends up working, I think, at least for, for my uses. And then inside those lines, I made the points of the star, again, just using the popsicle stick as a straight edge, essentially. Next, along the horizontal stripe there, I threw in some circles just to give it some more detail. Uh, but I did not count how many I did on this side. I ended up with one too many. So one side had six and one side had five. And here you see me realize that. So I just colored over the whole thing, made it just a sort of carved in section of the door using the ballpoint pen to just get rid of those circles so you can't tell. I uh, added another circle to the inside here, just freehand. Again, just some more detail, trying to, or trying my best to do as much as I can. And then for all the big empty spaces, I just very gently used the ballpoint pen to give it a, a nice texture that was different than the natural stone. And then trying to, again, make this door a little different than the stone around it, I base coated this in a dark purple. This is that violet color mixed with a tiny bit of black to give it, to make it even darker. 
And then from here, it's basically the same as the other stone, that, that light gray dry brush over the purple. And then I did change the tan to this just pure violet, uh, again, just hitting it sparingly. Uh, another black wash all over everything. And then once that was dry, the very light gray dry brush again. And with that, the painting is complete. But I wanted to add a few little extra things. So I have these spiders from some old Halloween stuff. I painted these up in this very old Citadel Dwarf Bronze paint. Again, just trying to hit on that drow loth theme that I'm sort of going for with the door. And then once the bronze was dry, I used some Nuln Oil to wash these. After that, I mixed up this greenish patina and just hit the spiders randomly to just age them a little bit. And here's what those look like up close. So you can see they look, look pretty nice. They're not too cartoony in my opinion, so it works for me. So after that, I grab some super glue, the spiders, these gemstones, which I'm going to use to sort of hint at spider eyes on the door, and then these pair of pliers just to help me grab things. Uh, I glued the spiders on the four corners of the star, and then I glued the gemstones here in the middle, again, just to give the idea of spider eyes. And with that, our door is complete. So the next thing I started working on was some heads on pikes that might go in front of the door to serve as a warning to other races that might come across this drow city door. So using some bleach bone, I have these GW skulls. I painted a whole bunch up, uh, but I also found this sort of like goat demon skull that I thought might be a good centerpiece. Uh, I used some Agrax Earthshade to shade those, and those are pretty much done. So initially I was going to use these toothpicks that I painted ever so slightly as the pikes, but they ended up being way too thick, as you can see here. So I tried some pins, some sewing pins, and those ended up being too thin. I ended up grabbing some paper clips. These ended up being the right thickness. So I straightened some of those out, cut them to length, and then uh, after cutting off just a little bit of my total length, super glued the skull in between the two pieces. Uh, I actually ended up using a lot extra super glue because once it dries it leaves this sort of crystalline extra bulk around the skull and I had an idea for that. These are the five that I ended up using. You'd see that extra glue all dry at the top and then I used this elf flesh to actually paint over the glue and then with a little bit of wet red paint I made the super glue into the sort of rotting flesh over the skulls. Now the paper clips are a little too shiny, so I used some bolt gun metal to dull those up, added some rust effect with a dark orange, and those are all done. Sorry for the interruption, but I just wanted to remind you that if you aren't already, please subscribe. I post videos every other Friday of new projects that I've got going on. Please hit the like button if you're enjoying this video. Leave a comment of something that you think might make this project better or another project that you might wanna try to see me tackle. I do have an Instagram account where I post pictures of work of progress or other projects that I am not necessarily doing a video on. But more than anything, thank you so much for stopping by. Now let's get back to it. Next, I started working on some mushrooms. So I have this little wood bit here that actually makes a great mushroom base. And we're using the Crayola air dry clay again that we used in another project to sculpt the mushroom cap. And that's sort of what we get, just a nice disc. After taking the cap off, I use this little sculpting tool to make the ridges on the underside of the mushroom. And with that, our little mushroom is all set to go. Next, I wanted to make some smaller mushrooms. Using those toothpicks that we dyed earlier, I'm just gonna make three different kinds here. This is what I call a button mushroom. And then the next one I'm gonna make is a morel styled one. For the morel, you sort of get this uh, potato shape. And then I use a little tool to poke in the holes that the more morel mushrooms have. Can't really see it here, but once it's all painted, they, they look a lot better. 
And then the last mushroom that I do is just sort of a long and pointy one. I call these gnome hats, which is what it reminds me of. So I ended up making uh, a lot of mushrooms, big and small. You can see that once this is all dried, I had a little bit of a crack in this one, but that's okay. Sometimes mushrooms split naturally or get bumped or whatever, so I figured I'd just go with it. And then obviously I made a bunch of the smaller mushrooms. After base coating everything in black, I painted the morales in this coral color on the very far right, the gnome hats in the violet, the button mushrooms in a burnt orange, and then the large mushrooms I did in a bright red and then sort of a wine red. The underside of the mushrooms, I just use that country twill on the undersides of everything. And then I washed everything with some Agrax Earthshade. And the wash really helps the morales here, really enunciate the features and the, uh, the little holes in them. And then for the, our big mushrooms, after they were washed, I have this enamel white paint. Uh, this is meant to be used on glass and metal, I think, but it's this really thick paint that dries almost as thick as you put it on. So to add some three-dimensionality to the caps of the big mushrooms here, I used a toothpick and applied that enamel paint. You can see here how tall the little dots are. And this is after it is dried. You can see that it's they've reduced a little bit, but it does add a nice little uh, interesting feature to the mushrooms. Next, I wanted to throw some torches on the front of this door. So using a toothpick and a few of these beads, I think the middle one here is actually like a leather rivet, but uh, I sort of stacked these together to make a torch base. And then using some super glue, I glued all these together. And we're going back to our dwarf bronze, painted those up. And then just use some Agrax Earthshade to wash those. For the flames, I used this hot glue stick and carved uh, what I would consider to be like a crystal shape. But then to round off the edges, I just hit it with a flame very quickly. This rounds everything off and makes it sort of a nice more natural shape that like a flame would be. Made two of those, one each, I stuck them on some toothpicks to paint, and then I just used a very simple paint scheme. I coated everything in red. You see I accidentally started backwards first, but coated everything in red, then the bottom two thirds orange, and the bottom third white, and then I used a cotton swab to sort of blend everything together. Uh, and then gently dry brush the tips of the flames with black. And then I glued those on to our bases here and we got our torches. Next thing I did was mix up some green stuff to make some sort of wall mushrooms. I'm not sure what they're called, but you can see I, after tearing some off, I shaped it in sort of a half circle and stuck these on, just played with it until it looked right. And this green stuff is so sticky, I didn't need to glue it. Uh, after it had dried, these were all super attached. Uh, I made a bunch of these and just stuck them over the entire piece. You can see here, these are after they had dried. I sort of smooshed them all down to make it look like they, these mushrooms were really stuck to the stone walls here. For paint, I mixed up this bright pink using the coral and the red from earlier. Just trying to make all the mushrooms as different as possible. Uh, but I painted all these in this bright pink. This gets toned down a lot. It looks pretty cartoony right now, but after the wash, it, it really comes back down. Using the Agrax Earthshade again to wash all these, and then I dry brush these with the coral just to highlight the edges just a little bit. And with those done, it's time to glue everything on. So everything was on toothpicks, so it was pretty easy to just throw on some Eileen's Tacky Glue and punch everything in. I hot glued the large mushrooms down and spread the little mushrooms all over the place. The large goat skull that I found, I based here with a little bit of chipboard and a bead, colored that up, 
like rusted metal and a paper clip and stuck that down over the top of the door. For some flocking, I have this moss that I hot glued sort of randomly all over the place. And then I mix these two static grasses together to make a sort of lichen material all over everything. Uh, I also tried my hand at some spider webs using some dryer sheets. After that, I glued in our door. Uh, hot glued around the edges just to make sure it was all secure. And then I painted the back of everything black again just to make it a little cleaner for my overbrush strokes. And here is it all together. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm really, really proud of how this turned out. I think it looks really good. I really hope to get more than one use out of this, but I think it'll look good on my shelf regardless. The spider web there is a little off, but for my first time, I think it was pretty good. You can see the heads on the pikes stand out really nicely. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And again, as a reminder, I post videos every other Friday, so I hope to see you next time.